guys, just want to talk about uh, some of the Joseph brought up relating to his girlfriend leaving him for a foreigner. One of the things I will say, it's not white foreigners, it's foreigners, end of, because you're getting a lot of South Koreans, you're getting Japanese, you're getting uh, Malaysian guys. Um, I think Malaysia it suffers with a lot of mummies boys, so as such, a lot of women do not like those guys, um, so they find it harder to marry. Um, but uh, there's people coming from everywhere, and I can understand that uh, some of these things are an issue, especially with local, because trying to compete salary-wise is near impossible for most people. But at the same time, that westernizing creeping of finances over everything else is something that is being recognized. At the end of the day, you've recognized it as one of the failings from the West. And I doubt you'll find anybody here that would disagree. Um, as you said, feminism has been in the Philippines, but it, the court system hasn't caught up yet. But I would actually say the, that will still stagnate for a while because of the power of the church in the Philippines. There's still a lot of people go to church on a regular basis. In the UK, churches are for ceremonies for most people. They go there for a baptism. They go there for a wedding, a funeral. They don't go there every Sunday. They may not pop. They won't pop there for uh, burning candles or for remembrance or things like that. Most people I know couldn't remember the last time they were in the church. So there is some stuff that is fundamentally still there in the Philippines, and as is much of Latin America. Um, but at the same time, I do recognise deterity is improving the country, and a lot of people are sort of against deterity because of the the war on drugs that is ongoing. But I recognise that the Cebu airport terminal is probably opening in the next few days, um, which gives us a much better airport service. I recognise that the new Mactan Bridge is going in. Infrastructure stuff that others have talked about but not delivered. I recognise Tommy Osmena's um, crackdown on Cebu City on bad driving and bad parking. Stuff that I didn't really see before in the Philippines. Because it all comes down to people taking responsibility. And it's all part and parcel of a better society. Now, don't get me wrong, you do not want the Western crap that we have. You do not want the PC brigade. Um, but also, don't get into this trap that Westerners are the problem and root of all evil forever or whatever. A lot of people out of Africa get, Africa get locked into that. It's all, oh, you have white privilege or this. No, it's not white privilege. Um, any person in the UK is entitled to the education system and everything else. If somebody decides that they don't want to educate themselves, it's because they decided they didn't want to educate themselves because it's free. Um, it's not white privilege. And in the same way, the, the 12 steps of change in the Philippines, I mean, learning to deal with litter properly, learning to, not spitting in the street, not urinating in public, all this sort of stuff is very, very basic steps. But at the same time, you look at other places like Singapore and how they changed and look where it is now. The biggest problem in the Philippines is purely corruption. But allowing people by simply saying, well, it's always been like that, it's always going to be the same, which is often what you get, will continue that trend. That's what needs to change. It's recognizing you can change it. Deterity, getting elected, proved that that could be changed. But it needs more work. When I was dealing with people in the Philippines business-wise on the last trip, there was a fundamental change in every single meeting I went to. The closing of Boracay for six months due to the, the raw sewage issue, I've had people complain to me that it was unfair that they shut it down. Do you know what? They'd already been warned about it. They knew they had to do something. They're raking the money in, yet at the same time cannot manage basic hygiene. That is just stupid. And then sitting there complaining because they've been shut down that the president's a bad guy for doing it. No, he's actually doing something responsible. The problem is the waste. 
Um, but when I went into a lot of these meetings, people are talking about zero carbon, recycling, waste management, changing the way people deal with the waste in their locations. No littering. Do not throw waste on the streets. Do not do this. Because they're changing the mentality of the workforce. And they're asking, they're asking me about how I would do it. And it'd be the same way it would in the UK and the Middle East. You find people. Because talking to them about it, you start off with that. You make them aware that this is the rules. And you, then you start introducing things like scorecards. But later on, you start introducing fines. Because what happens is, if you have a scorecard with a set level of um, rules, so for example, say littering. Littering, you get a warning once. Twice, you get a verbal warning again, and it, you're told that it's your final warning. Third time, you're thrown out. But at the same time, the company you work for as an external contractor will also receive a fine. And you may actually blacklist the entire company from coming on your sites. And that is normal because you know what? The UK recognise that. Working on Tesco sites, for example, they have very strict health and safety policies and everything else because they need to. Because when you don't do it, people get killed and they're going, why did they get killed? Because you know what? It starts with a litter. It starts with a litter. Because if somebody can't use a bin, why are they going to follow any other rule? And that's where I, I, I get to 30. And I get what uh, Tommy as men is doing with the Cebu City by actually enforcing the laws that exist. Because people have got away with it for so long that they assume that, that that's it. We just do it what we like. Well, if the Philippines needs to move forward, it needs to start recognizing that doing these little things have a rolling effect because if you're not dumping plastic in the rivers they're not having to dredge the things but it also means that when the storms come and they wash houses away and it's caused by the plastics building dams until it gets to the point that it comes through with a massive flow there's the recognition that piece of plastic actually killed somebody and that's my view on it. Quite simply, the Philippines is in a position of change. But don't lock yourself into the way a lot of um, African nations do, which is simply blame the white man. Because you can blame the white man, but you've had your power for a long period of time. Your problem has been the corruption. And it continues to be South Africa, for example. Look at the state of that now. Um, the transition has, to, has begun with the authority in the Philippines. What's important now is the continuation and the development to allow the Philippines to prosper. It has the resources. It's riddled with um, gas, oil, copper, silver. It's got everything there. But stop exporting raw materials and start manufacturing. Thanks for watching.